Hey guys, welcome to chapter 8 over supporting input output and storage devices. This will just be a quick overview of chapter 8. We have several objectives for this chapter as you're reading and going through the material. First one is to learn about the general approaches you need to take when installing and supporting input output and mass storage devices. Next objective that you'll cover in the chapter is learn how to install and configure several input output devices such as barcode readers, biometric devices, perhaps digital cameras, webcams, graphical tablets, and touchscreens. Next objective you will cover is to learn how to install and configure different adapter cards. The next two objectives are to learn about supporting the video subsystem including selecting a monitor and video card and supporting dual monitors and video memory. And lastly the chapter will finish with concluding about how to learn how to support optical drives and flash memory devices. As you've already learned throughout the course, input and output devices may either be internal or external devices. And there are several basic principles that apply when installing internal and external devices. And we'll look at those now. You can see that we have, you know, every device is controlled by software, obviously. Uh, the best guide for installation and support is to get that from the manufacturer. Always go to the manufacturer to get all the most current information needed. Some devices are going to need you to use application software for the install. And devices no faster than the port or slot that it's designed for. And this is just a general rule of thumb in computing anyway. You're only as fast as your slowest component. Whenever you're doing an install, always make sure that you're using an administrator account. And if you're on a machine that, let's say a customer's machine, and you know they're on a user account, Make sure you have the credentials for putting in these type devices so you have that admin account. If you're in a network environment, always make sure you have that network account because you know the UAC will prompt you if you're doing this on a user account, will prompt you for those admin privileges and you'll need those credentials to be able to continue on. Problems are sometimes solved by updating drivers or firmware. We see this a lot. Um, even as you already have a current device installed, it may something may have conflict created a conflict and you're no longer able to use it sometimes simply updating your drivers will allow your device to all of a sudden work whenever and I've mentioned this before whenever you're installing any type of devices in, in a computer make sure you're only installing one device at a time this is for basic troubleshooting if you install multiple devices at a time and you have a system problem well now you've got a lot of factors that you have to go through so install one device make sure it runs, make sure nothing happens in the action center and then install your second device or third or fourth. Just make sure you're doing one device at a time. Since I mentioned the action center, I'll go ahead and take a look at that now. I've, we've seen it in previous lessons uh, but use this action center um, sometimes to solve those minor problems. A lot of times if you're installing a new device you'll see that your action center is working in the bottom right corner in your notification area. Um, in Windows 7, Windows 7 will automatically launch the Action Center if a problem occurs. You'll be able to see the progress there and you'll see that the green check marks means everything's good to go. If there is an issue that is found, you'll see that red X and I'll tell you why there's a red X there. And if you didn't install properly, you can always click on that link for a quick uh, help window to pop up. But a lot of times when it comes to such as this screen here with the driver being the issue, like I said, just go to the manufacturer's website, download the most current driver for that device, install that, and you'll probably see that this issue has resolved. You can also see this in the device manager. So if the action center did not resolve your issue, make sure to try the device manager. I'll show you a couple ways of how to bring up the device manager here. Now some devices have separate BIOS chips from the motherboard, and so you may have the ability to up date through its device property. So if, if we go to the device manager, we can find out a lot of information about our device and possibly fixing, you know, having some of the solutions that we could not solve in the action center. As I said, I'll show you a couple ways here. Uh, one of the simple ways if you can remember the command is just devmanagement.msc. So we'll go to run here. And we will run that. You see devmanagement.msc hit OK and you will see the device manager pop up. 
And you can see everything's good here. We don't have any issues. We don't see any of those yellow triangles. There are no issues. But if we did have a problem, we might see that, you know, there's an issue and we need to solve that. Um, you can also look at your drivers here. Let's just say we had an issue with our keyboard. And we can see we can right we can select our keyboard, we can right click on that. If we want, we can click update device or driver software and it'll go out and see if there are any updates for that. And we can either search on our computer in case we downloaded them, or we can search automatically to allow it to browse and look for the, a new version of that driver. We can also right click on here, select properties, and you see we have the option here for driver. We can look at our driver details to see where they're located, get some information, see what version. If we wanted to update driver, we can choose it there as well. So you see how you have several options available to you. I'll show you another way to get to the device manager. So to access that, you could also click on the start button here in Windows 7. You could right click computer, select properties, and lo and behold, we have the option to choose device manager here. Click that and you'll see we have the exact same look we had earlier, just a different way of getting to it. And there is our device manager. So just remember here, using your device manager, you have the ability to disable or enable device. You can update its drivers, as I've shown you. You can uninstall a device, or you can undo a driver update that might have occurred, and now your device is failing, so you can fall back or undo that driver update. So if we take a look again at our keyboard, we can uninstall that keyboard. We could go into the driver, and we could uninstall the driver. So lots of options here. Just make sure that those four main components are to disable or enable a device, update its driver, uninstall a device, or undo a driver update. Another key part of Chapter 8 is to know the data transmission speeds for various ports and wireless connections. Definitely need to know your distance limitations and your transfer speeds of these various ports and wireless technologies so, so that you know if you're installing something what are the main factors there for including that. If you go on to take your A plus exams you will be required. There may be some questions to ask you, you know, if you were installing a device what is the maximum length you could have for this type of port or wireless device. For example if you were going to install a wireless network adapter onto a desktop PC and into an environment and you needed to get above some lights or something like that and it asked you if a 20 foot USB cable would be sufficient obviously you would need to know that the maximum cable length is 5 meters for a USB 2.0 and knowing the difference between your USB ports comes into play here because as you can see with the USB 1.1 if you had a legacy type computer you can only go up to 3 meters or approximately 9 feet with an extension cable on that USB device so make sure you study this information definitely know uh, your wireless technologies know that the differences on the maximum speed is on those you know if you have an old let's say a USB network adapter uh, card or USB adapter then you would know that you're only going to get transmission speeds of up to 11 megabits per second as opposed to an AEG or N type device in which those speeds are greatly different than the 802.11b Wi-Fi type so make sure you know those and make sure I know there's a lot of information here just like we've seen with uh, some of the other information from our chapters, but this is very, very important information for you to know as you're working in the field.